Because the actions that your formulas perform require particular data types, sometimes you'll need to convert values from one type to another. So for example, you can't include a date in the text that your formula returns without first converting that date to a string. And rollups can be particularly confusing because their data types can differ from the properties that they retrieve. So in this lesson, we'll explore how to convert data types and configure rollups for use in formulas. So you're going to want to be comfortable with my formula fundamentals lesson before diving into data type conversions. But as a quick refresher, every value of a notion property is one of four data types. We have numbers, dates, booleans, which are true or false. And then we have text strings, and most values are going to be strings when they're applied within Notion formulas. And the operations that your formulas perform require particular data types. So, for example, you can only calculate the sum of numbers. You can concatenate or merge text strings. You find the time between two dates, and you compare one Boolean with another Boolean. And so therefore, when you reference other properties as inputs in your formulas, you need to remain mindful of their data types. If you attempt an operation with incompatible data types, you'll get what's called a type mismatch error. So in this formula property here, if we try to add the number one to the string one, we get a type mismatch error. But as you'll see, we can use a function to convert that string to a number and then submit successfully. So we're going to look at a couple of these conversion functions, the first of which is the format function, which converts values to strings. So the format function accepts just one argument. It can accept a number a date or a Boolean value, and it's going to return that argument as a string that can then be concatenated or merged with other strings. So I often use the format function when adding context to properties within the gallery format. So you can see in this example of people, we have these isolated numbers, and we don't really know what those numbers mean. And they happen to be the age of each person, but the gallery doesn't display the name of the property. So what we can do is toggle over to our table view, and we can see that full name and that age property. And we can add another formula property, and we'll call it age contextualized and choose the formula type. And what we'll do is we'll wrap the age in that format function. So if we type format and then reference the age property, it's going to return the age as a text string. And we know that because it's aligned to the left. So that can be concatenated with another text string. In this case, we want to apply that contextual term age. So we'll do that with a colon and a space and separate them with a concatenation operator and then submit. So if we toggle back over to our gallery, instead of displaying that standalone age property, what we'll do is we'll display that contextualized age property which looks much nicer in our gallery. And then as we already saw briefly, the other conversion function is the two number function. And it works much like the format function, but instead of converting a value to a text string, it converts its single argument to a number that can then be used within mathematical operations. So as you saw, it can accept a string like two within quotation marks and convert it to the number two. And then if we reference a date property for its argument, it's going to return this big number. And what this is, is it's called a Unix timestamp, and it's the number of milliseconds since Unix epic or January 1st, 1970. And then for Boolean values, it's going to return either a one or a zero, one for true, zero for false. And as we know, checkboxes in Notion are Boolean values where checked is true 
and unchecked is false. So what that means is if we reference any of these requirement properties, we can convert their values to numbers and then calculate a score. So let's do that briefly. What we'll do is we'll keep our existing formula here and just replace the reference with requirement one and submit. And so you can see that because all of these requirement one values are checked, we get a one for each one. But then we can copy that, paste it, and add requirement one to requirement two. And you can see here that for item A, the total remains one because requirement two is unchecked. But for B and C, both one and two are checked. So we get a two. And if we do it one more time and reference requirement three, you can see that we have the returned numbers one, two, and three. So for each of these requirement properties, we're converting them to numbers and then adding them together to tally our total score for each item. So let's move on to roll-ups. Like I said, the value types of roll-ups can be pretty tricky. So as you know, roll-ups retrieve the values from related items. In this case here, we have transactions and we have invoices. And each of these transactions is a payment for an invoice. So each transaction is related here to its corresponding invoice. And what that allows us to do is use rollups to retrieve information about the associated payments. In this case, we have a rollup property that retrieves the date of the corresponding payment, and we have another rollup property that retrieves the total amount paid. So if we look at the configuration of this payment date rollup, we've chosen the payment relationship. We want to retrieve information about the associated payment. And for that payment, we want to retrieve the date. And right now we have the default calculation of show original. So that's where this gets tricky. This default calculation of show original is always going to return a text string. So if we try to use this value within a formula as a date, we're going to get an error because while this looks like a date, it is in fact a text string. So if we wanted to calculate how many days late an invoice was paid, we'd want to find the time between the payment date and the due date. And to do so, we would use the date between function. And as its first argument, we'd supply the payment date. Second argument would be the due date. And then we want to find the number of days between them. So you can see here that we get a type mismatch with this formula because payment date is not a date. It is a text string. So I'm going to copy this formula and come back into our payment date configuration. And rather than show original, I'm going to convert this to the latest date. In this hypothetical instance, this invoice could have been paid over multiple payments. So we just want to show the latest payment. And so that is going to align the value to the right and convert it to this natural language, which I don't find very useful, but it is of the date value type now. So if we come back into our days late formula, paste what we had written previously, we can now submit it and we can see that this first invoice was five days early, the second one was on time, and then the third was three days late. So numbers work the same way. For this total paid roll-up property, we are retrieving the money in property for the related payment. And currently our calculation is set to show original, which is where it gets confusing. Again, show original is always going to return a text string. So if we wanted to calculate the balance of the invoice as the difference between the amount due and the total paid, we would write our formula so that we are referencing amount due and subtracting total paid. And we get that type mismatch error saying that total paid 
is not a number. So I'm going to copy this formula and come back into our rollup configuration. And in this case, we might want to sum all of the values being retrieved into a single total paid. And you can see here that that's going to align the value to the right, indicating that it's a number. So if we come back into that balance formula, we can paste what we had written previously and now successfully submit it. And it's going to show that all of those invoices are fully paid with a balance of zero. And then one little caveat about rollups. If you select as your calculation, show unique values. For each of these invoices, we just have one transaction, but in some cases you'd have multiple. So if in our formula property, we were to just reference this total paid property, you'd expect it just to reflect its value. But instead, it's actually going to display the count of unique values. And here we have it still formatted as a currency. But if we change it to a number, you can see that it's a one. So if we were to use this value within a formula, its input value would actually be a one rather than 1200. So you'll typically want to choose another method of calculation when you're going to use the value in a formula, so long as this unintended behavior persists. So that covers when and how to convert data types for use in formulas. And if you have any trouble with these concepts in your practice, feel free to tweet at William Nutt.